few months ago i made a video on how you can programmatically open trading view charts and in that video i showcased how you can embed trading view charts in your projects and one of the comment that i received on that video is if it's possible to plot trading view charts with your own data and it's it's possible but it's not possible with the approach that i discussed in that video so in today's session we're going to see how you can plot trading view charts with your own data trading view offers three different charting libraries that allow you to plot charts with your own data the first one is a lightweight chart which is quite easy to use and it's quite easily accessible you just have to include the cdn file in your html document and you can start using it and it's free and open source and it also has quite a bit of features quite a few it, it's also loaded with a lot of features so and it's also quite easy to use the only downside is that it doesn't have the capability of adding a tool tip or drawing something on the charts or being able to include indicators but other than that it's, it's very capable trading view also offers couple of other libraries but these are a bit difficult to get your hands on you have to fill in a ch fill in a form and submit some details and then request for access so it's not as easily accessible as the lightweight chart so i'm not going to cover the other two in this video and if you scroll down you can see a comparison between all the three libraries if and you can see that uh, the candlestick charts are available in all the three libraries you can also plot area and line chart and the main difference is the capability to add technical indicators you can see that the indicators option is only available for the second and third libraries so if indicators is your requirement then what i'm going to discuss in today's session may not be may not suffice your requirement but if if you just want to plot the charts with your own data without the need to reinvent the wheel then you, you may follow along this is where you can find the documentation for the lightweight charts if you scroll down you can see all the different features so it it supports both static and live charts which is great and it's also quite lightweight and it's open source which is nice and it it also gives you all the interactive features like zooming and panning and scrolling around and all that stuff and if you scroll down you can see it, they also provide so many examples and if you click on this icon you can get the code for each example so i'll leave a link for this uh, site in the description box you can check it out and explore if you want to know further in today's video we're going to cover three different examples the first one is a static chart where we're going to download the candlestick data for a particular coin from binance and just plot it as is using the lightweight charting library and second we're going to create a live chart where i'm going to use a socket api to get the real time candlestick data for a particular coin and then plug it to this library and we we're, we're going to plot it it's going to be a live chart and third we're going to combine the above two examples and create a live chart with some history to follow along you need to have a basic understanding of the following concepts so you need to have basic knowledge of html javascript and if you know how to use fetch api and sockets api it does come in handy but even if you don't know these two then it's fine i'm going to show you how to do it it's very simple we can do it in like five or six lines of code all right i've created a folder called trading view custom data and i already have two other folders which i'm going to talk about later so first i'm going to create a new folder for static charts i'm going to call it static charts okay and inside that folder i'm going to create index.html file and then i'm going to create index.js file let's initiate initialize the html file i'm going to set the title to static chart and then i'm going to put a header i'm going just going to say binance btc usdt chart okay and then i'm going to create a container to hold the chart i'm going to call it tv chart i'm not going to set the dimensions here we're going to pass it in the code and finally let's include the javascript file and we also need to include the trading view charting library so let's go to the documentation and here is where we can find the cdn file just copy that and paste it here that's it let's move on to the javascript file before we start writing the code i want to first go through the pseudo code so that you understand the whole process so first we're going to define the chart properties where we're going to set the width and height of the chart and some other properties 
Then we're going to create the chart with the defined properties and bind it to the DOM element, which is uh, the div element that we just created. And then we're going to add the candlestick series and then set the data to that candlestick series and render. Okay, let's write the code. First, I'm going to create a reference to the console log. Then let's create a variable called chart properties. We set the width to 1500 pixels and then the height to 600 pixels. And we also need to pass the time scale. And in the time scale, we say time visible is equal to true and second visible is equal to false. So we need to pass time visible and second visible because we're going to send the timestamp in, in milliseconds. And I got to know these fields, then the field names by looking at the documentation. Okay. So first step is done. Now let's move on to the second step. So first I'm going to create a reference to the uh, TV chart development. So I said DOM is equal to document dot get element by ID. Then we're going to create the chart constant chart is equal to because we included the library we can use this function directly so lightweight charts dot create chart this takes in two parameters the first one is dom element and the second one is chart properties next let's move on to the step three which is creating the candlestick series All right, step three is finished. Now let's get to the final step, which is getting the data and rendering the charts. So we're going to use BTC USDT candlestick data from Binance and use that to render the chart. So this is the API to get the candlestick information. You can see that the response is in the form of an array and each element in the array is also another array, which contains the information for each candlestick. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use a fetch API to get the data. So let's write the code. I'm going to copy paste this link. I need to invoke this function to convert the data in the appropriate format. And it's also an asynchronous function, so it returns a promise. So then, so this is where we have the data. Now, keep in mind that in order to set the data to the candlestick series, we need to create an array in ascending order and ascending order from, from, a time, from the time frame standpoint. So the oldest candles come first and the newer ones come at the end. Okay, and each element in the array is a JSON with the following fields time, open, high, low, and close. So let's create that uh, mapping. I'm going to use a map function to do that and return time is equal to zero. And let's let's first write down all the fields. Okay. Now timestamp should be passed in seconds. Okay. And the timestamp that you see here is the first element in the array and it's provided in milliseconds. So we have to convert that to seconds by dividing it by thousand. So we say D of zero divided by thousand. Okay. And the next 
value is the open price but you can see that it's in a string format let me zoom it uh, you can see that it's in a string format so we have to convert that into a number so we're going to say parse float of d of 1 okay and i'm going to copy this and paste it here d of 2 because the next one is high and the next element is low and the last one is close that's it that returns the data in the appropriate format now we have to do the final step which is set the data to the chart so to do that we say candlestick series dot set data and we pass the candlestick data finally to catch any errors we can write the catch module that's it now let's open the file in the browser and let's see if it works or not it's going to fail because of a CORS issue but let's let's try to do it first if you press F2 you can see that I made a small mistake guys that should be ID instead of class so that's the reason when we get the element by ID it failed so let's refresh now all right you can see that the request to the Binance API got blocked because of because of the CORS policy so I covered about this several times in the past I'm not going to repeat it but I'm going to use a proxy to be able to make this call and use that proxy in the code and I'm going to share this is the proxy that I have in the folder so when we started writing the code you might have noticed that there were two other folders so one of them is a rest API proxy so let's start the proxy first node rest proxy all right the proxy is activated all you have to do is append your URL to this URL and it should work let's go back to the code and I'm going to add it here and let's restart the page refresh the page and see if it works awesome so you can see that the chart got displayed and you can see that I can zoom in I can pan around and I can zoom in, zoom out, and, do, and I can do everything that I would normally do with a trading with chart. And you can see that the timestamp is displayed on the bottom. So it works, right? And I can do this with any chart. So I can change it to, let's say, instead of BTC USD, I can change it to Ethereum. And I can change the interval to one day. And yeah, it should be small d. And let's re refresh the page. Yep, you can see the Ethereum chart now. You can see the price is 144. So it works. So this is how you display a static chart. Now let's move on to the real time chart. Now a lot of the code is quite similar to what we did with static charts. So I'm going to duplicate this folder and reuse it for dynamic charts. Now in order to create a live chart, we need to have a socket that provides the data feed for the live chart. This is why I had another folder created initially which is the socket that provides the data feed for the candlesticks. So you can see that if you open the code, you can see that it provides the live chart for BTC USDT one minute time frame, And it's, it's a straightforward code. So I'll, I'm not going to go through this code in this video, but I'm going to share this in the repository as well. You can check it out. And I'm going to initiate, initiate this web socket from here. That's it. The socket is initiated. Now let's write the code. Let's close this and go back to our dynamic charts folder and in the index file. So here we're going to add another step, which is step five. Plug the socket to the chart. Okay. That's it. Now I'm going to comment out this code because we're just going to display the live chart and here we're going to initiate initiate the socket from the client side now to do this to initiate a socket we need to have the socket related library included in our code so go to the so go to this website and you can download this the latest version of the library so i'm going to copy this socket.io cdn and let's include that Perfect. Now let's write the code. First, I'm going to create a variable called socket and 
we're going to connect to the socket that we just initiated which is a local host 127.0.0.1 colon it's running on 4000 port that's it and then the data is streamed on k line message so we have to listen to that uh, message so socket dot on k line then we pass a function we want to say pl for now let's just log this data on the console and see how the response is so let's save this and let's open this page if you go to the console you can see that let, let's clear everything uh, you can see that the data is getting streamed like every second so the data is, is in the format that we want all we need to do is just plug it to the chart so let's do that so I'm going to comment out this code and in order to connect the data feed to the chart we can do it in one simple step which is candlestick series candle series dot we need to invoke a function called update okay and just pass in the payload as it is that's it now if I restart the page the chart should work just going to close this okay it doesn't have any history yet but you can see that the candle works perfectly fine I'm just going to let it run for a few minutes and I'm going to fast forward the video so that you can see the new candles popping up Alright, you can see that uh, if you just let it run for a while, the new candles keep getting plotted. Alright, in, in the final example, we're going to combine the first two examples. So we'll have the historical data as well as the live data. So let's do that. I'm going to clone the Dynamics Charts folder because it's going to be pretty similar. We'll call it with history. All I need to do is just uncomment this code and just restart it. That's it. So here we're going to set the historical data and here we're going to pass the live data. So both of them work in tandem. So let's open the file in the browser and see how it looks. It looks good but we have to make a small correction because you can see that the historical data that we're getting is for ETH USDT. So let's change this to BTC because the live feed is for BTC so we have to make sure that the historical data also uh, belongs to BTC and the candlestick time frame is one minute so let's refresh the page now and yeah so it works perfectly fine and if I just zoom in to the most recent candles and just let it run you can see that it's it's live it keeps getting updated and I'm going to change the titles to static chart dynamic chart and uh, dynamic chart with history before I deploy the code onto github that's it for this video guys I hope you find it useful and the only downside is that you cannot have indicators but other than that it's pretty uh, useful and the, the charts are just as good as trading view charts you don't have to do any configuration you can see that with just a few lines of code you can render the charts with your own data so yeah just leave your thoughts in the comment section talk to you in the next one bye